a reminder from Georgia's Secretary of State to help secure your vote. COVID cases surge nationwide, and it may only be the beginning. A warning from public health experts as Americans let their guards down. In Game 7, uh, it ends with a tough loss for the Braves. The home teams take on the somber end of the season, but with a dose of hope for their future on the diamond. Our top story this midday, the second week of early voting kicking off today. We've seen record turnout since last Monday with nearly a million and a half people casting ballots either in person or via absentee. Nick Sturdivant caught up with Georgia's Secretary of State this morning to see how the process has gone so far. It was the second press conference in less than a week by the Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger. He started by thanking Georgia voters and those working at the polls. So many people either voted early in person or did absentee voting. So let's break down the numbers. According to the Secretary of State, about 1.5 million people have voted early in our state. More than 819,000 voting in person and more than 633,000 absentee voters. Bolton, DeKalb, and Cobb so far have the highest voter turnout. Raffensperger says if you're still waiting on an absentee ballot, be patient, but you do have another option. I'd say right now you have that time is on your side, but if you get closer to week number three, if it still doesn't show up, I would encourage you then to vote early and show up. The counties can check you off the absentee ballot list and you can vote. And just a reminder, you have two weeks left to early vote. The last day is October 30th. We are now 15 days away from Election Day. President Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden are spending nearly all of their time in swing states. Tracy Potts has the latest on both campaigns and a new deadline for coronavirus relief. We're going to win the state of Nevada. With 15 days to go, President Trump is defending his coronavirus response in battleground Nevada. If I listened totally to the scientists, we would right now have a country that would be in a massive depression. Democratic nominee Joe Biden in North Carolina. This president cares more about his Park Avenue perspective on the world, the stock market, than he does about you. Because he refuses to follow the science. Coronavirus cases are soaring. Medical experts predict a tough winter. The next six to 12 weeks are going to be the darkest of the entire pandemic. America holding out for a vaccine. The first tranche of people to get vaccinated really won't be protected from the vaccine probably till February and maybe March. And so that's a long way off. The Trump campaign is defending the president's mostly maskless rallies. People don't want to be living in fear again in their basements. We're going to be strong. We're going to be safe, but we're not going to be scared here. Meantime, on Capitol Hill, the clock is ticking on COVID relief. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi set a 48-hour deadline. The 48 only relates to if we want to get it done before the election, which we do. Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin are at odds over money for states. They're set to meet again today. Another sticking point, testing and tracing. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the White House has watered down the language and taken out support for communities of color disproportionately affected. By this virus. We're waiting to hear back from the White House on that. Tracy Potts, NBC News. We are committed to answering your election questions. Our voter access team is reaching out, so please keep those questions coming. Send us an email at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com or text us at 404-885-7600. The final presidential debate is happening this Thursday at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker will moderate. And then after the debate, NBC's political team will have a full recap and analysis. What are your plans for this afternoon? Well, it'll be a, it will be a good day to get out in that garden. Hmm? You've been waiting, you've been, you've been messing around with your mums and things. Now you got to get out there, do some pruning, some cleaning, that kind of thing. Beautiful afternoon to do so. Uh, plenty, plenty of sunshine around. Wear your boots. You don't want to mess up those good sneakers, right? 76 degrees for your afternoon high temperature today. A little easterly breeze at about six miles per hour as we head through the afternoon. Look at that. Almost, almost cloudless, almost. We do have a few clouds out there, but not going to take away too much from our sunshine today. Temperatures in the 60s and some 70s out there as well. Look south of the city of Atlanta, you'll find 70s all around. Look at this. LaGrange, Thomason, both at 72. Peachtree City at 70. 70 also in Edenton and Athens. 68 degrees in Atlanta, Carrollton, and also into Covington. 66 in Canton, 67 degrees 
up in Blairsville. Clayton is the cool spot this afternoon at 62. We're going to heat up to the 70s today, well into the 70s as well. I'm thinking 76 for your afternoon high temperature for today. Going to watch that sunrise, uh, the sun fall by 7 o'clock tonight, so our days are getting shorter, folks. We'll be down to 70 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. Hey, we got a new tropical storm out there, Epsilon. Stationary right now, but winds at 40 miles per hour. It is headed up toward the northwest. Will it hit the United States? We'll talk about it in our full forecast coming up. Stay with us. Christy, back to you. All right, Chesley, thank you. The family of a girl shot and killed in Atlanta on the 4th of July says they intend to sue the city for not doing more to protect the community. Eight-year-old Sequoia Turner was shot and killed when the car she was riding in turned into a parking lot that was being blocked by protesters. There had been several protests in that area in late June and early July after police shot and killed a man while trying to arrest him for drunk driving in a Wendy's parking lot. The attorneys for Turner's family says they're seeking $12 million in damages, arguing that the city knew the protesters were armed and had been blocking the street, but failed to act to protect the public. The actions of the city of Atlanta, the mayor, the chief, city councilman Shepard, started before July 4th. And they violated their ministerial duty to provide protection and health and safety for Socorro and her family. They also allowed and maintained a nuisance to occur on University Avenue across from the Wendy's by allowing vigilantes, armed vigilantes, to occupy a public street. And then third, they had a defective road that they allowed and maintained in violation of Georgia codes and laws. The family's attorneys are giving the city 30 days to respond to the notice. We have also reached out to the city for comment. A 19 year old man is facing charges in the little girl's death, but police are still investigating whether others may have been involved. 38 states have seen an increase in COVID cases over the last two weeks. Public health officials warning people are letting their guard down. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has the latest. This morning, public health experts say the U.S. may be battling a third wave of the coronavirus. COVID cases are now rising in more rural areas as colder temperatures keep people indoors where the virus spreads more easily. You cannot say that we're on the road to essentially getting out of this. The next six to 12 weeks are going to be the darkest of the entire pandemic. According to the NBC News count, cases in 38 states and D.C. have increased at least 10 percent in the last two weeks. 30 states have risen 25 percent or more, including New York, prompting authorities to nix a 10,000 person wedding set for today. There is no safe way to do that. Here in Wisconsin, an emergency field hospital is opened at the state fairgrounds as the number of hospitalized COVID patients tripled in the last month, threatening to overwhelm the state's medical facilities. We are in crisis here in Wisconsin. In North Dakota, where early voting begins today, 4% of the population has already contracted the virus, most within the last few weeks. There are only 20 ICU beds left in the entire state. I've never seen anything like this. And over the weekend, New Mexico's governor sounded the alarm, tweeting her state is seeing a 101% spike in COVID hospitalizations. Across the country, experts say COVID fatigue may be to blame. Unfortunately, the virus is not tired of us, and so we have to remain vigilant. But that fatigue means people are now wearing masks as consistently. Uh, people are starting to gather more indoors. And the pass is caught and on the run. It's Dale, after weeks of COVID concerns, the NFL played all of its games this weekend after no new cases. And now more regions are reopening, including New Orleans, which has loosened restrictions, allowing outdoor bar service and indoor music. In Florida, a court order struck down Miami-Dade's curfew as businesses struggle to survive. Here to go against the, the county mayor. We understand his precautions, we understand his worries, but our worries is to feed our families. The state's second largest school district welcomed back more students to the classroom today for phase two. Today, all Cobb County middle schoolers had the option of returning back to classroom learning. 
The district says about half of families chose to continue remote learning, but more than 14,000 students were scheduled to walk into the building today. Everyone inside a school is required to wear a mask. The district also added hand sanitizing stations, routine classroom cleaning and plexiglass shields. And of course, students will be expected to keep their distance from each other in the lunchroom and all lines. If all goes well with phase two, Cobb County high schoolers will be able to return to class on November 5th. More students also made their way back to Fayette County Schools this morning. The district resumed in-person learning for its middle and high schoolers. The students will have face-to-face -face instruction for four days a week, with Wednesday being a flex day used for cleaning. By next Monday, though, all students will be back in classroom five days a week. The district still allowing students to learn remotely. Students in Decatur City Schools won't be returning to the classroom until next year. The district decided last week to revise its plan for students and staff members. In-person learning for that district will resume at the earliest, January 5th. Employees who were scheduled to return to work inside schools today can continue working remotely. Early childhood students may remain in schools as planned. We have a back to school guide on 11alive.com that breaks down plans for each Metro Atlanta district. We can send it right to your phone if you'd like. Just text us the word school to the number on your screen 404-885-7600. American Airlines says it could return the Boeing 737 MAX to passenger service before the end of the year. It's expecting the FAA to certify the plane by late November. If all goes as planned, American will begin operating a daily 737 MAX flight between Miami and New York come late December. The plane has been grounded since March of 2019 after two separate crashes killed more than 300 people. The airline says it will make customers aware they are flying on a 737 MAX. For the first time since the pandemic, more than a million people were screened at TSA checkpoints nationwide yesterday. The number of people screened is still 60% lower than a year ago before the coronavirus pandemic. The lowest number of people screened during the pandemic was right at 87,000. That was back on April 14th. Still to come, a creative way to heal. How an artist went from painting a canvas to helping breast cancer survivors heal with some ink. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. 
quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the verified. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a reminder that so many people across the nation are in a fierce battle against the disease. Healing is a process that can take time. Kendall McGee shares how a North Carolina woman is using her talents to help survivors heal. Janine LaCourt is an artist. Painting was an early passion for her, but after her sister-in-law was diagnosed with breast cancer, she put down the paintbrush. From my very first tattoo, I knew this is what I should be doing with my life. Today, she walks the line between medicine and art, specializing in 3D nipple tattoos for people after breast cancer and scar camouflage. And I understand how much weight a scar can hold. Um, sometimes you don't even realize what it's doing to you emotionally um, until you can have a resolution that helps hide it. The healing is more than skin deep. Her patients say LaCourt's work has given them the confidence to move on, date again after a mastectomy, and apply for their dream jobs. As much as I love doing this for people, I would love to never have to do this ever again if it meant nobody else had cancer. Behind the pink ribbons that surface every October is a poignant reminder to talk about prevention and the importance of catching it early. As you can't tie a pretty pink ribbon around what cancer is. Um, but it is a chance to openly talk about something that affects every person because literally everyone knows one person at least that has gone through breast cancer. Whether it's a cancer survivor or someone looking to get rid of scars from accidents, surgeries, or self-harm, LaCourt oh, says great. she keeps in touch with each of her patients. Okay. You're, they're part of my family. They're part of my friends now. Um, because I helped them through that journey. You know, I took them past, past the hard into what's the next phase of their life. And it's so powerful to be part of that. All right, folks, we are looking at a beautiful day. In fact, we have a live look here up at uh, Blue Ridge. And you can see where we have a few cumulus clouds floating overhead. For the most part, though, we have mostly sunny skies. Leaves are changing on the trees. Folks are getting out and about. Look at them walking across the street. They have jackets on, though. Temperatures up there in the 60s, low 60s, starting off uh, for this afternoon. So you may need that jacket. But as we head through the afternoon, you may open it up a little bit as temperatures will begin to warm right on up. As you can see, there you have it. A few clouds here and there, but that's it. Uh, not going to take away too much from our sunshine today. We'll have them hit and miss today. We'll give it a 10 out of a possible 11 today on the wasometer. Wasometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. 76 degrees for your afternoon high temperature, but uh, that's uh, above our average for this time of year. We should be in the low 70s for afternoon highs. Beautiful throughout the southeast. We've been tracking this rain up here to the north and west of us. Got a cold front trying to make its way down here, but not going to be able to make it in. High pressure just a little bit too strong. We have high pressure just to the north and west of us, bringing in an easterly flow here. As that area of high pressure gets more to the east, we'll bring in a southerly flow. That'll do two things for us. It will boost our temperatures, A. B, it will start to bring in some of that low-level moisture, so we'll see a little bit more in the way of clouds, uh, especially as we head toward the middle of the work week. And toward the end of the week is when our rain chance will begin to go up. That area of low pressure there, again, I think this front will, will stall and become stationary and wash itself out. So we won't see the rain from this. The other new development for this afternoon is a tropical storm. Yes, we have a tropical storm. Epsilon, right there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean here. Movement is stationary. It's located about 735 miles southeast of Bermuda. That's that little speck on the screen right there. And that's where it will be headed. Now, it's stationary now. And if storms were to remain stationary, if they just kind of stayed there, camped out in the Atlantic Ocean there, upwelling would take place. What I mean by that is you have warm waters here on the surface, but colder waters beneath, and it would draw some of that colder water up to the surface, and that would help to the, dissipate the storm. But it's going to move, of course. In fact, here's the latest track from uh, the National Hurricane Center. You can see it is forecast to remain stationary for today, tomorrow, and then begin to move up to the northwest by Wednesday, uh, possibly strengthening to a Category 1 hurricane as it moves near Bermuda by Friday. And then those winds up to 90 miles per hour as it moves Saturday, turns more to the north and eventually remains out to sea. So right now does not pose a threat to the United States at all, but something that we'll have to watch and see. And we'll continue to track it for you uh, as we head through the next couple of days. But Epsilon, the 27th named storm, 
of the year. We get one more name storm, we'll tie a record. That was back in 2005. That was a famous year with Katrina and Wilma. All right, here is our forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows this afternoon, we're basking in the sunshine. A beautiful afternoon. Uh, temperatures finally starting to heat up into the 70s at some spots. Of course, that's where we'll land today. Uh, we'll be looking at tomorrow pretty much the same. Starting you off with mostly sunny skies. We're going to hold on to that for much of the day on Tuesday. Notice some changes, though. Notice how the rain is starting to push in to the south, our southern portions of the state. Also, those clouds, that's what will be making its way toward us, not that front up there to the north. We'll get our moisture in from the south. And so by the time we wake up on Wednesday, we'll wind up with partly to mostly cloudy skies on the outside. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds through the day on Wednesday and pretty much the same as we head into Thursday. Right now, the rain threat remains down to the south, but we're expecting that to start to creep up to the north as well so that by Friday, we'll introduce a very low chance for the rain. Uh, could be increasing as we head into the weekend on Saturday. That rain chance may go up a little bit. So let's recap it in our seven day outlook. As you can see, Monday, Tuesday, we're looking at tens on the wisometer. Temperatures in the middle 70s for today, upper 70s for tomorrow. We're going to hit those 80s by the time we hit the middle of the work week. Wednesday, Thursday, looking at 80 on Wednesday, partly sunny skies or a mix of sun and clouds. Same on Thursday with nines on the wisometer. 81 degrees will be the afternoon high. You're looking at uh, middle 70s by the time we hit Friday and toward the end of the week, but that rain chance goes up a little bit. So you're looking at a 30% chance on Friday. Right now, we'll give it a 30% chance on Saturday, and then by Sunday, we'll begin to clear it out with 74 degrees for the high. Christy? There is something sunny today. That's good to know. All right, let's talk about game seven and the Braves. They just couldn't pull it off. But the team, they're not letting the loss dim their hopes for next year. We have highlights and lowlights from the diamond. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. It, it, it hurts right now. It really does. This this moment sucks, um, but the, the Atlanta Braves organization is set up for success for a very long time, and this group of guys that we had this year started something special. Something special indeed. An emotional night for the Braves after a tough loss to the Dodgers. It is far from the outcome fans had hoped. The Los Angeles Dodgers once down 3-1 to one in the NLCS. They rally from behind, forcing a Game 7 and then go on to win it 4-3. to three. Alex Glaze is in Arlington, Texas with more on the Game 7 nail-biter. Well, the Braves had a 3-1 lead in the NLCS. All they had to do was win one game before the Dodgers could win three, and they were not able to do that. Let's go to Game 7, pick things up in the first inning. Marcel Ozuna put the Braves on the board with an RBI single. Braves add to the lead in the second, a moonshot from Dansby Swanson. Braves holding on to a one run lead in the fourth and then this happened. No outs runners on second and third for Nick Markakis. He grounds the third but Swanson and Riley ran on contact. So what was an opportunity turned into an absolute disaster. Braves not able to capitalize and we all know that runs are hard to come by in the postseason. Dodgers able to tie things up and then in the seventh Cody Bellinger sends one into the seats and that was the difference 4-3 the final.
we took a huge step forward this year. You know, we hadn't won a postseason series, and then we won two, and we got a game away from the World Series. And, you know, we're taking strides in the right direction. And, um, and we did it with our young players. No doubt this one hurt, but after the game, I, I noticed guys like Ozzy Albies, Johan Camargo, and Dansby Swanson hanging back after the rest of their teammates uh, cleared the field. And what they were doing is they were watching the Dodgers celebrate. And, and to me, that tells me they wanted to remember this moment. They wanted to internalize this moment uh, so that they can use it to fuel them for what many expect to be a very bright future for the Braves. But this season has come to an end. The World Series will be the Dodgers taking on the Rays. The bright side of the weekend in sports, the Falcons winning their first game of the season. The Dirty Birds defeating the Vikings 40 to 23 on the road. The win comes under the new leadership of interim head coach Raheem Morris. Head coach Dan Quinn and GM Thomas Dimitrov were both fired following last Sunday's game. If you miss enjoying movies at a theater, yeah, I do too. But AMC has a way you can enjoy all of the perks with all of your closest friends. We'll tell you how just on the other side of the break. Truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Welcome back. Here's a way to be social in a pandemic. How about you rent a movie theater for you and 20 of your closest friends? AMC says give them a call. They're offering the theater rental for as low as $99. Officials say some movies might be a bit more expensive, but most 99 bucks. Anyone wanting to take advantage of this just needs to fill out the online form on AMC's website. Time is running out to enter our Oh Say Can You Sing contest. This year, the AJC Peachtree Road Race is virtual, and so is our annual contest, because what is not virtual this year, right? If selected, you could virtually perform the national anthem at the world's largest 10K or at the Peachtree Junior. All you have to do is email us a video of yourself singing the national anthem to contest at 11alive.com by noon this Friday, October 23rd. You can check out 11alive.com for more information on the contest. Thanks so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon. I'm Christy Diaz. Stay safe. Have your house cleaned by outside workers. The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only.
We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth.